Hello chess friends and welcome to Yozarov's chess channel and welcome to our series opening traps and miniatures in chess. So in this series I'm going to show you some common traps that you can use in order to make uh, progress in chess, in order to maybe win games very easily, very effectively and today I wanted to show you a really cool opening trap in the berry attack against the King's Indian or East Indian defense. And this trap is really a cool one because basically it seems so that your opponent doesn't make any mistakes because the, your opponent plays natural moves, really healthy developing moves, but gets punished because of this double fianchetto setup. I'm sure you have seen many players playing the double fianchetto, but this really is a great way, I think, to punish the double fianchetto. The double fianchetto uh, has its, adv its advantages because you're placing your bishops on the most uh, active diagonals, but it has also its disadvantages. And here I wanted to show you really how you can punish your opponent when he plays this double fianchetto setup against the berry attack. So let's check out this trap. Uh, here you play as white this trap. We have the move d4. You're your opponent will respond with the move knight to f6. We have knight to f3, g6. Uh, your opponent will try to go into a king's Indian or east Indian defense. You play the move knight to c3 and your opponent plays uh, the move d5 because he is not allowing you here to make progress in the center with the move e4. Uh, after d5 we have bishop to f4 and this bishop to f4 is a natural move of this a berry attack which I like to play so that's why I wanted to show you also this trap I've played this trap that I'm showing to you today uh, many many times even against feeder master and intermaster so this is really cool trap the good thing about this berry attack I'm gonna show you some also some opening theory is that um, here with this move knight to f3 bishop to f4 and this pawn on d4 you have occupied really your opponent's uh, e5 square and whenever you do that whenever you have a good center control the early flank attack is really po possible so that's the great thing about the berry attack because you can really play an early flank attack which we like to play against your opponent's fiachetto setup so in the game your opponent will probably try the move bishop to g7 and now e3 castling bishop to e2 don't play the move bishop to d3 i'm going to recommend you bishop to e2 in my d4 series if you're familiar more with my youtube chess channel i'll explain the difference between bishop to e2 and bishop to d3 so you should play bishop to e2 and now your opponent will try this double fianchetto the main idea of this berry attack setup is to play the move knight to e5 liberating this diagonal so that's important uh, also uh, an important thing is to place the bishop on e2 because then we can cover the h5 square so now we are trying h4 h5 uh, cracking the position um, on the flanks and now maybe after h6 g6 try to uh, bishop to play bishop to h6 trade off the dark square bishops and somehow include the queen on the h file and try combined with the rook create dangerous attacks on the h file even some checkmate threats are possible in this setup so in the game bishop to b7 and this is now an important move don't try this trap if your opponent stays with this bishop on this diagonal when your opponent changes the diagonal when he plays the move bishop to b7 then only but then only it's uh, this trap is possible so here you, we are going into a normal attack of the berry attacks um, h4 with the preparation to play h5 and your opponent can make this mistake he can play the move h6 it seems like a natural move because maybe your opponent doesn't want to play here this move h5 but still i think you can make progress with an immediate g4 move cracking the position on the queen side uh, pardon me on the king side so your opponent can sometimes play the move h6 his main goal is after the potential h5 by you uh, he'll try to pass through and attack your bishop with the move g5 but that's basically what we want to do so basically your opponent has already fell fall into a trap because now we can sacrifice the bishop so this um, this opening trap is really a triple piece uh, sacrifice now bishop takes g5 is the possibility after h takes g5 now we have this dangerous attack on the bishop with the move h6 so let's see now a couple of choices by black everything is bad basically uh, the best way for black here to proceed if black doesn't want to lose immediately is to play the move bishop to h6 giving it back to bishop rook takes h6 and after king to g7 we would go to uh, h3 don't retreat with the rook to h1 we want to play with our rook very actively so now your opponent could try uh, to play rook to h 
uh, eight, challenging the rook. But now we have a very important move of this berry attack. It's the move bishop to h5. So in this uh, attack, we are basically challenging now already this f7 pawn. Your opponent could try maybe to get off, uh, trade off the bishop. But now we can simply take after rook takes h5, still queen takes h5 again with the attack on f7 and then queenside castling. Uh, again, including this other rook on the h file, and again, black would have many, many troubles. So, see, uh, I think that even this bishop takes h6, giving back material idea by black doesn't work. So, one of the other ideas can be let's see again, h5, g5. Uh, we can take bishop takes g5, h takes g, uh, h6. Now, your opponent could maybe retreat with the bishop. So, now we should simply continue to push with the move h7 attacking the king so now again uh black has uh, basically two choices the worst choice is to take the pawn with the knight on h7 we'll come to that your opponent can also choose to play uh, here the move king to g7 now a very important continuation for you to memorize is this move bishop to b5 this is very important because uh if you don't play this move you will probably lose the game this is really the best move some of your opponent's ideas can be uh, the move a6 kicking away the bishop the importance about this move is when your opponent plays something like knight to d7 or knight from f to d7 in order to challenging your knight then after a potential bishop takes d7 this knight will be always deflected from the defense of this h5 square so we want to go with our queen uh, to h5 and then create a checkmate on h6 so this is the main idea of this attack and the pro uh, problem is always our bishop uh, that stands in the way because we would love to include the queen somehow in the, the attack and now our bishop stands in the way so one of the most natural moves of the berry attack is to move bishop to d3 or bishop to b5 this is li really a liberating motif now we could play queen to f3 queen to h3 even and try queen to h6 so bishop to b5 if your opponent tries to challenge your bishop this is not a problem stay with the bishop there play simply queen to f3 if your opponent takes uh, here h takes uh, pardon me a takes b5 then queen to f5 wins the game immediately because now the main threat is Queen takes g5 with the checkmate. In order to prevent this ideas, your opponent can only play the move knight to e4. We can play knight takes e4 after something like e6 because you have to play this move e6 in order to protect your uh, g5. But now, queen to h3. You see how important this liberating move of the bishop was. Now, uh, the queen uh, cannot come into the game because uh, we would love to play from black's perspective something like knight to f6, uh, pardon me, queen to f6 in order to protect this h6 square because the main threat, as I said, is this uh, checkmate on h h6 but the problem is this knight is covering that square so your opponent if uh, your opponent takes out the knight then you get queen to h6 and it's game over so let's go back here so here after the move uh a6 you see that doesn't bring you so much so the only move that black can play uh, here is this move bishop to c uh, eight idea then uh, again uh, you should try to play simply continuing our attack with the move uh, queen to uh, queen to f3 with the idea to play queen to uh, g3 and then again attack this uh, weak pawn on g5 so you see it's a little bit too late again if black tries here uh, to play something like queen to d6 in order to somehow cover the h6 square then queen to f3 is again the best move and you see the importance now of this bishop uh, if uh, the bishop covers this d7 square because if your opponent tries to challenge you with the move knight to d7 now comes also a very important move it's queenside castling not take out this uh, knight waiting your opponent to take the knight after knight takes e5 we would have d takes e5 and if queen takes e5 again queen to h3 your opponent has to cover uh, with the move queen to f6 he has to really ha uh, cover this important h6 square but now we should simply proceed with the move rook to d5 and i'm not seeing a good way how black should defend here because we can simply play queen to h5 the main idea and also rook to g5 uh, then it's again deadly if your opponent takes uh, here knight uh, bishop takes d5 then we have knight takes d5 and the problem is if 
uh, black tries to defend here with the move queen to g6 then bishop to d3 wins the game immediately again the queen has to give up this h6 square and it's game over if your opponent uh, tries somehow to defend we can also take out the c7 pawn deflect the queen so the main idea is to deflect the queen from the defense of this h7 so you see how problematic this setup can be and uh, this is really important for you to memorize this next couple of moves so you see how your opponent can get crushed although with a piece up with some material up but now uh, black is even a whole rook up but still on the losing side so let's see this other continuation so here in this after this move h6 your opponent can play a bishop to h8 now again we can proceed with the move h7 let's see now what happens if your opponent takes out uh, the spawn on h7 then the most important thing is here to play bishop to a6 this is the tricky part of this uh, this is now a new piece sacrifice if your opponent takes the bishop bishop to a6 as i said the main idea about the bishop move bishop to d3 bishop to b5 or like in this example bishop to a6 is to liberate the, the diagonal for the queen now queen to h5 and it's game over your opponent could try maybe prolong the game with a simple uh, bishop to d3 move but not a problem we can simply take c takes d3 king to uh, g7 is only one move prolonging a poss possible checkmate queen takes h7 king to f6 and now rook to h6 it's game over so again the only move that helps black a little bit here after the move bishop to a6 to prolong the game is maybe bishop to c8 but now again this move queen to h5 uh, if your opponent tries bishop to f5 then we simply chase the defender a little bit we have again the possibility uh, to play the move bishop to d3 and again it's game over you don't you cannot really include any defenders you're gonna be checkmated here on the h file after trades of bishops let's see bishop takes d3 again maybe c takes d3 and you cannot uh, um, prevent white from checkmating you if you try to create yourself some kind of a breathing space with the move rook to e8 after something like i don't know queen to h7 you get checkmated immediately here with the move queen takes f7 and it would be game over so i hope you really like this berry attack i played very very often this is really a very important thing for you to memorize after the move here h6 simply proceed with the move h5 the problem for black here is if black takes also the spawn then we can simply take bishop takes h5 g takes h5 and now the queen again comes into the game so nothing is gained in the next move we'll take out this pawn and then again create our dangerous attack on on the h5 so you see this is the main tactical motif of this trap after the move h5 g5 and now bishop takes g5 so it's game over basically here for black so at the end of the video uh, here is one chess puzzle for you to solve at home uh, try to find the best next move uh, try to uh, crush here white it's not a checkmate sequence but it's a winning sequence here black has a great attack with some uh, great pawn breakthroughs and some sacrificing uh, pieces motifs so here uh, again i'm asking you please don't write uh, answers to this uh, chess puzzle in the description in the comment section below just try to improve your tactical skills and your strategical skills in the middle game and this i set up because it has it has really some great great attacking motifs here for black okay i hope you enjoyed this video meanwhile you can watch my other videos from the series opening traps and miniature here is the link and you can also watch my basics in chess series videos in which i show you opening principles middle game strategies and end game strategies and you can also subscribe to my channel if you like this content thanks for watching guys and uh, chess is the best of course